Hi, I'm Hector Garcia. I'm a CPA, an advanced QuickBooks Pro Advisor, and a QuickBooks Trainer. I'm going to show you how to reconcile a bank account in QuickBooks Online. Wait, I don't need this hat. So this is actually one of the most common questions that I have, which is, hey, how do I get my banks reconciled in QuickBooks Online? Now, before we get started, let's talk about the premise. The premise is we've already entered all the transactions into QuickBooks. We've entered the invoices, the payments, the bills, the payments to those bills. Maybe we downloaded all the transactions from the bank. And then after we've entered all the transactions, we want to make sure that the ending balance of the bank matches all the transactions that are inside QuickBooks. That is what reconciling is for. So we're going to click on the gear menu on the top right of the screen. Then we're going to click on reconcile. Then we're going to select the account that we're going to reconcile and we reconcile bank accounts and credit card accounts. We have to reconcile both. In this case, I'm going to reconcile my checking account and then I'm going to look at my beginning balance. So I'm going to take a look at my bank statement for the, the month that I'm about to reconcile and I have to make sure that the beginning balance of my bank statement matches with my QuickBooks. If it doesn't match, you may need to get an accounting professional involved because your books are pretty much a mess. So you want to make sure the beginning balance matches. And if that does, you can move forward. Then you're going to read the ending balance from the statement and you're going to type it in there. So let's say it's 4959.45. And then you're going to put the ending date of the statement that you're about to reconcile. So let's say that's going to be February 28th. And then we're going to click on start reconciling. You're going to notice the beginning balance on the top of the screen that you're going to see the current cleared balance. We're going to see total payments and total deposits. We're going to scroll up and down and see which transactions have been checked. Normally, when you download the transactions from the bank with this banking feature, and if you're unfamiliar with that, check the description below. I have an entire video dedicated to the banking feature to download transactions from the bank. You're going to read from your bank statement which of the transactions have cleared the bank from the statement you're looking at and you're going to check them in QuickBooks as you physically check them from your statement. So you're going to come in and you're going to check them and you're going to leave anything out that's not physically on your statement. You're not going to check in QuickBooks. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to check them in the paper as I do them in QuickBooks one by one. Let's say, for example, that this check hasn't cleared yet, so we'll skip that one and we'll keep going. Let's say this check 11 also hasn't cleared, so we'll skip that one. Let's say check two also hasn't cleared. We'll skip that one. And then we're going to go down. At the end of the day, when I check all my deposits and payments that match my bank, I'm going to notice that I'm going to see total payments here and total deposits here. I can match them with my bank. And then we're going to see this big green sign that says check mark, you're done, difference zero. Now, reconciling means getting to the point where your difference is zero. If you can't get there, you're either missing transactions the transactions that you have don't have the exact same dollar amount as the bank, or you have duplicate transactions that you're marking as clear. That's what this exercise is for, is for you to check one by one. If this doesn't work, you're going to click on the little circle on the top to mark them all cleared. Yes. And then mark them all uncleared and start over. You have to make sure that you go through this process, transaction by transaction, one by one, until you get to that point where the difference is zero. If you can't get to the point where the difference is zero, then technically you're not reconciling. Now, once you get to that point, you're going to click on finish now. It says success. You reconcile your bank account. You can click on view report, which I like doing. And I like printing the report and attaching it to the paper bank statement. If I, ha if I happen to work with paper and then we're going to scroll down and we're going to see the ending balance. And then we're going to see something else called the register balance. Now, this register balance, which is this very last line that's here, this is the balance in your books. If you pull up your chart of accounts, that's going to be the balance in your bank account. So if I go to gear and then I click on chart of accounts, go to see chart of accounts, notice that my QuickBooks balance here is 1201. That's the same thing from my reconciliation report. Let me click on reconcile. Let me go back to history by account and pull up that reconciliation report that we were looking at just now. 
So that's what a 1201 means. That's that register balance that's going to be on the chart of accounts. Now, the statement balance is what's going to show up in the, in the bank statement. And that's the one that we're reconciling against. However, there's also something called the register balance, which is the balance that we're going to see in the balance sheet if we pull up a statement of that date. Now, there's going to be a difference between your register balance, which is what shows up in your books, and your bank balance, which is this line here called unclear transactions. These are all the checks that we didn't mark as cleared as we were doing the reconciliation, which we're going to scroll all the way down and see all the unclear transactions, which are these three here, because these are the ones that didn't clear the bank on the specific month that we were reconciling. Hopefully on the next coming month or maybe two max, those are going to show up. Normally in the United States, uh, checks don't really have any val validity after 90 days to six months. So after a while, these checks really need to be voided. But we need to make sure that we include them in the books to recognize that expense, even though they haven't cleared that it is an expense because you've committed to pay that money whenever the payee actually cashes a check. And there's going to, always going to be the difference between a bank balance, the QuickBooks balance, the chart of accounts balance, and the cleared balance, because all these things differ based on the situation of that reconciliation. So hopefully this video was useful. Hit like, subscribe to the channel. Check the description below for some more videos about banking and other QuickBooks related videos. Thanks.